Welcome. Thanks for hanging out while we took our quick break. Uh, we did our short rest. Um, um, well, and we grabbed some drinks and refreshments and stuff. So uh, we, we catch up with our envoys, uh, having interrogated some shadow cultists and down below the sewers of, of Aldus, and have come back with ill-gotten occult loot 
and are trying to solve uh, how this fits into the rest of the pieces, puzzle, the piece, pieces and puzzles they have so far, and have arranged to meet with a senior envoy by the name of Master Soot, a ride crow, and uh, also a professor at the, the Royal College, along with the history professor, of, uh, the chair of history at the Royal College. I would like to object to that to, to, to that uh, description. There is nothing ill-gotten about uh, what we've done. I'm glad you said it, because I was thinking the same thing. I always assume at least 5% of what I'm doing is ill-gotten. I mean, yeah, but that's just like flavor text. I mean, we are categorically the good guys here. Right. True. We right. have not crashed an RV into anything this time. Exactly. <laughs> I'm too busy reading this evil book to have noticed <laughs> what, how we were described. But you're, so. but you're reading the evil book for good reason. I hope you're reading the evil book. Just for good make reasons. sure to keep any pencils away from Kale. I'm just saying that, you know, when, when, when the books were stolen originally, they were ill gotten. We are rightfully retrieving them. <laughs> we're stealing them back. Didn't steal them. We, we beat them up fair and square. <laughs> like, come on. We, we didn't steal, we mugged. It's slightly different. Um, having successfully mugged the Shadow Focus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, you're currently meeting in the Royal uh, Archive, in the Royal Compound, uh, in your workroom that you've set up uh, with various maps and tomes and other uh, items and relics of days gone by that you've recovered and trying to cite, uh, get through the, most of them that seem to be encoded in various ciphers and trying to uncover the, the secrets that they hold so that you can figure out what this cult is up to. Uh, and uh, that's where we find you. Uh, you and uh, your would-be allies. Uh, Sif has welcomed you in, you shut the door, there's sacks of refreshments um, on the table nearby. I hope they're categorically our allies, too. I hope they're not would-be allies. We're in danger. I, okay. I don't want to assume for you on your behalf. <laughs> Everything Jonesy says is suspicious. Is this normal? Yes. Um, before we talk to Professor Marsh, can I, do I know the name Jarvis? Do I know what that means? The guy who this book belonged to? Like, historically, would I know who that figure was? Um, I will say possibly. I will, I will let you make a history check. Okay. I will tell you that it's a high DC, but uh, I will let, let you attempt it. 14 is probably not high enough for a high DC, so. Unfortunately, no. You, it doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Uh, you do, from context clues from the journal he wrote, you do understand that he was uh, an arcanist of some sort. He dabbled in arcane magics and possibly occult magics. Well, probably occult magic space in the context clues. Yeah, we already got a sense that that was his shadow that we were fighting, right? In the yeah. Of this. Okay. Yeah, actually, the, the impression you got is uh, in, in Aldous, in, in Blue Rose, uh, if you dabble in the occult too much, uh, you actually get corruption. And upon your death, you can actually, you, you're cast out from the Great Wheel and you are reborn as either a uh, vampire or wraith or, or ghost or something, depending on, on the nature of your um, corruption and also the nature of well, your nature as a living being beforehand. So, but. And I'm sorry for all of this, <laughs> this background that I should know, but I don't as well. No, no, um, no. Totally. In destroying this wraith, does that revert the soul back to the wheel or will it just be reborn again as another wraith? Depending on how you dispatch the wraith, uh, it could possibly either be destroyed for good or it might call us back into a wraith. Um, it would not have returned to the Great Wheel. Okay. 
<clears throat> knowing that you you used uh, radiant arcana to dispatch of it, you're pretty positive that it's it's forever removed from the cycle. Cool. Thanks. Well, that's preferable. He's earned himself a time out. You were out of time. <laughs> well, an indefinite time out. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, so, uh, welcome you all. Uh, please, please come in. Um, how can I be of a service? Your missive kind of suggested it, it uh, had to do with some of the tomes and, and items that we were researching. So I, I hope you don't mind. I asked uh, my colleague to join us, uh, being the, uh, the master and head of the history department. I, I figure he can maybe shed some light on things that I'm not quite as versed in. Hmm. Sounds good to me. All right. So we found two books, two books that don't seem good. <laughs> and uh, we were wondering what you think we should do with them. We have a journal and we have a cultist stone. I, 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 I'm <laughs> going to shut that up. So, so do you bring the books out when you say that, or are you leaving them tucked away? We'll definitely pull the journal out. Yeah. Okay. Well, we normally, if it was depending on the context of the journal, we would normally uh, review it and then recommend that it be stored in either the the restricted archives here in the Royal College uh, or it be removed uh, from the city proper and uh, relocated to the Vault of Censure. Well, maybe I can give you the, the abridged version and you can tell us where it should go after that and I will pull out my notes. <laughs> Uh, and just kind of talk through every everything that I found important. Um, I'll mention specifically the tear and the roads, just in case that means something to uh, to Professor Marsh. Um, Uh, so as you, as you kind of give the Cliff Notes version, um, is there anything else anyone was going to chime in and uh, elaborate on as that's going on, or is it just going to, going to let this Kale run and give the Cliff Notes? I'm sort of happy to let Kale take the lead. Yeah. Especially since Kale knows this guy. So. I'll, I'll mention to him, too, that it seems like it's from the Empire of Thorns. Did I write that down right? You sure did. All right, awesome. Um, and I will allude to also the wax seal with the stylized E and V um, and mention that I saw that branded on someone in the sewers, which I think you said had a like an interlocking vine pattern on it, um, which yeah, is was something an, that I yeah. think was the old empire. Yeah, it was an interlocking um, uh, uh, wreath of, of briars. Of, of thorns. Um, yeah, so with that, um, you kind of talk a little bit about that. Uh, Nichols, uh, Nichols asks if you could, uh, uh, if he could see the book and then you kind of lay it on the table and um, look through it. And he'll start uh, kind of filling in some of the gaps. From uh, from what I understand, um, historically speaking, uh, there was uh, obviously, as you're well aware, during the there was the the, the Empire of Thorns, which was uh, ruled over by the first Empress uh, Empress Dashal, the Shay, 
uh, Empress Dilshe, the Dark, as some call her, um, uh, declared herself first empress and used various occult magics to extend her life. Uh, upon her death, her various um, contemporaries and uh, senior lieutenants and other uh, shuttle lords uh, who ruled various pocket regions based on their use of occult mastery uh, went to war in a great rebellion and then a great rebellion overthrew them eventually dispatching almost all of the these great dark lords until recently uh, and then as of recently the last one has fallen uh, during the time shortly after there was a shadow cult that operated in the secret here in Aldous. They referred to themselves as the devout of the Shah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, if I remember my my histories correctly, and I'm pretty positive I do, they operated during the uh, uh, during the reign of Queen Sitla. Um, and they operated for nearly 30 years until they were finally driven out. Um, and there was a small resurgence several uh, decades later. Um, and then King uh, Karkin, Karkin uh, did manage to squash the last of them. Uh, and that was, I believe, 71, 72 BR, if I remember correctly. Hmm. So, so this journal uh, seems to date back that far. Um, um, well, it seems like the fellow who wrote it was uh, not very happy with giving it up. With that, you kind of get a little side quirk of the head by Soot. Did you encounter something? Well, yes. Uh, sort of uh, shadow wraith kind of thing. That's or distressing. Me ours. Hmm? That's I quite was... distressing. It, 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 it was um, memorable. Uh as far as, as the references to um, a, any kind of uh, roads or tears, um, uh, that is a little bit, that's leaving history and moving towards, uh, I think, more arcane lore. Because that doesn't uh, ring a bell with me. Um, I do remember recall um, stories of a of a tower to the south that was once um, an outpost of um, sorcery and occult mas um, mastery during the age of the rebellion, but uh, that fell according to lore. Um, which might be the 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 this fell spire they're referring to. Um, I I do know some others that might be able to give more guidance on some of those more esoteric cult and uh, arcane angles. Um, I'd be happy to to give you their names if you would like to speak with them. There there are people I can vouch for. Sure, we can take those names. Um, I I worry about getting this in front of too many people. Uh, the person that we kindly spoke with, uh, who seemed to know about this book other than you, um, he seemed to think that it possessed a, a key or a, a way of discovering where this fire might be. Um, in the wrong hands, this book could be 
potentially very dangerous. Understandable. Um, maybe just ask in inquiries and not uh, specifically reference the book or no, definitely not show it, but it sounds like you have a pretty good understanding of the contents of the, the, contents of the book. So, uh, sure. and as you, as you're saying that, you the, uh, Nichols is flipping through the, the, the book. Um, and you see that there's, along with uh, the text, there's some sketches and some drawings of some sort of uh, some various arcane sigils and, and runes, along with what appears to be kind of a map of some sort, like a regional map. Does anyone want to give me an investigation check? <laughs> I would love to. Oh, I I rolled a twenty-one, but oh, good. please, Drake, after you. <laughs> ah, <laughs> jeez. I rolled a twenty. So, so between uh, the three of you, because uh, Caesar got a fifteen, so it also picked up a couple of bits. Um, you're able to kind of uh, piece together the the map you're looking at corresponds with some of the other maps that you've gotten uh, that you the couple of others that you covered. It was the, the city map you covered is also a regional map uh, of the the nearby countryside, which had some strange markings on it and some strange roads, quote unquote, that were marked on it that didn't seem to co or correspond with any existing roads. Uh, allergies are kicking up, <laughs> so I'm getting all uh, my nose. Um, trying not to sneeze. Um, uh, they, uh, the it appears to indicate that the locate the would be location of the tower matches to where a couple of those roads, quote unquote, crisscross and overlay which you did earlier piece together those roads were actually ley lines of power so it looks like this um location this tower would be about two days ride to the south uh, and it seems to be a convergence of uh, some ley lines But you do know, um, based on your roles, that you don't recall there being a tower there. You don't recall there being any ruins there either. You just recall, recall that being a nice little uh, open field, rolling hills kind of area, not far from the main road that heads, heads south to the city of uh, Ernit. I mean, it's not worth investigating again or like the last temple it's underground or that although it is described as a a, a spire i lots of things were built on top of other things this the city is quite old yeah. well um, so as far as uh suggestions of who you can speak with uh Nichols uh, can recommend uh, two people that immediately come to mind. Uh, there is uh, Gareth. Uh, Gareth uh, is a rye fox. She is a master of uh, conjuration arcana. Um, and she, she lives uh, about a half day's journey from here. And then there is uh, Lady La uh, Lady Lindra Vess. Uh, Lindra Vess is a uh, professional acquaintance of mine. She's here in Aldus uh, proper, but she's out. She has a residence and small shop on the outer ward region of the city. Um, her experience is a little more first-hand, 
uh, having grown up in the and uh, Sharn, uh, Sharn, which is the capital of Kern to the north. But if if you wish to speak to either of them, I can send a, a missive ahead of time to let them know that you're coming and that uh, they should feel comfortable assisting you uh, with any questions you might have. And I can keep the exact nature of your investigation a little um, obscure. Sounds good. So we're going to head on over and then maybe plan a field trip after that, after we talk to the next person, guys. Is that what it sounds like? Yeah, it might be. Uh, psychically, I would like to reach out to Drake and say, um, should we mention to these two the Kestrel ordeal before we uh, go over and have that chat? If I can three-way, then I will do it to Teaser as well. I don't know necessarily that they need to know about what Kestrel's up to. I concur. He'd probably appreciate it if we kept his secret. It might help us when we're pumping him for information. I concur. Okay. That's more your thing than mine. Like, we don't have to be a dick about it. We don't have to say, hey, we kept your secret. Tell us what we want to know, but... But we can, and when we need <laughs> to get something we want, we shall. <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right, here is everybody. Um, <laughs> hey, category lead the good guys. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, uh, it was if there's anything, if there's any other questions you have for uh, specifically for uh, Master Sip or uh, Nichols. I don't think I have anything else for them. I think I'm okay. Uh, if you do think of anything, you can always send them a message. Um, so. Uh, so with that, you take your leave uh, and you head on over to um, uh, a, a rather nice estate in the high ward uh, part of all this. Uh, and uh, uh, before you left, uh, uh, Soot would have said that eventually that book needs to go to the Vulture Center. Uh, the Vulture Center is basically the giant. We lock all the evil, evil things here and lock them far, far away, and don't show, <laughs> don't tell anyone where this vault is. Vault. Um, but uh, so you make your way across uh, uh, across the neighborhood, a couple neighborhoods over uh, in the High Ward, uh, to a, a nice, uh, rather well-appointed part of town. There is a nice paved roads and the streets are all wide and they're lined with trees on either side. And there's walking paths and nice uh, wrought iron uh, uh, outcroppings that hold Shah's crystals that get turned on at dusk to light up the neighborhood and light up the streets. So it's, it's well lit. Uh, all the homes are uh, a little bit off the streets with large gardens in front. Um, and as you approach the rather large uh, three-story estate uh, of um, Crestwell, the Crestwell estate, uh, you can see that there's a carriage house and uh, there's a large garden. There's probably another garden in the back. Um, is meticulously maintained and just freaking awesome. Um, and uh, there's a small a wall around the, the the property. It's just like a knee-high wall, more more for decorative than is for keeping anyone out. And you watch the, you walk through the main open archway uh, up the walking path to the, the house. I like this place. Yes, this is quite nice. Or that I'm used to. Um, Jonesy, do we know did did. Um, did Cresswell 
have to go through the process of becoming a noble where he had to prove that he was pure of heart? Uh, yes. Uh, what you will know about Crestfall. Uh, uh, Crestfall, uh, which is his last name, uh, is, uh, is a member of the Noble Assembly, which is the highest ranking nobles in, uh, in all this. Uh, nobles basically come in uh, three flavors. There are traveling nobles, which is usually where you start off at, where they travel the circuit around the far edges of the kingdom. Uh, going to places that are small remote towns, kind of just settling minor disputes about who's the, the sheep's grazing on my side of the field and not, you know, and eating all my, my hay and, and that kind of stuff, minor things like that. Um, and then they get promoted up to regional nobles, and so those are in the more the bigger, the bigger towns and small cities and farther away from the main city, uh, the main capital, and then eventually the rank and, and Indeed, you can then make your way into the noble assembly. All nobles and all this uh, have to go through training and then a ritual uh, that that basically tests why they're trying to become nobles. Uh, long ago, uh, nobles were inherited titles that were passed down from from father and uh, mother to child. Um, note that Steve Lord, not Setting Lord, Setting Lord, they haven't really got into it, but it will become setting war if I have my way, but uh, <laughs> but but that all changed during the Great Rebellion, where because uh, that's kind of what led to the rise of the Empire of Thorns is is well corruption and, and nobles trying to hang on to power just for the sake of power and not actually um, uh, doing what's right for the the people. So, yeah. but, so yes, he would have gone through the the the, the training and. Well, then we don't wor have to worry about him being a bad guy. Should we just knock on the door? I think that would be a good way to start. Yeah, he's probably expecting I us. I will knock on the door. So, uh, after a, a few moments, a uh, a young lad answers the door. Uh, he looks like he's wearing um, like a servant's livery, and he's like, "Oh, greetings." Um, Kind of looks over the group, like looking for a, a, a like a point person or someone, yeah, and kind of locks eyes with Kale. Um, how may I assist you? Oh, um, yes, we're hoping to get an audience with um, with Edrin. Um, we have a feeling that he might be expecting us. Ah, very well. Um, and you would be. Oh. Um, my name is... Uh, We're bird watchers. Yes. We're interested in a rare bird we saw last night on the rooftops. Um, I think a kestrel of some sort? The kid looks a little confused and... Um... If you need a name, mine is Bob. <laughs> Very well, um, would you please wait here and kind of, uh, kind of opens the finish, or, you know, moves out of the way, finishes pulling the door, uh, wide open, and kind of points to a small little sitting area in the foray. What? He's gonna smoke bomb us and blow us all up, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stand by the window. So, and with that, uh, and then the, the young lad, uh, turns and walks off. Um. Uh, as as you wait, what seems like you know every second ticking forever. Uh, a, a few short minutes later, not that it feels like that, but uh, a few short minutes later, uh, the the ladder turns and says, "Um, uh, if you would please uh, follow me," and tur turns and goes to walk off. We'll follow them. Okay. And uh, the young lad gui uh, guides you to a, a rather a well-appointed sitting room uh, on the edge of the house. It looks like it's a sunroom. Uh, there is a one wall is pretty much glass. It's uh, several large panes of glass makes a little wall uh, and kind of a slanted roof since the sun's kind of coming in. There are several uh, plants kind of uh, around near the edge of that glass wall. 
uh, soaking up the, the sun. And there's a small uh, harp and a, uh, and a few other musical instruments laying around. Uh, and there's also a rather large uh, couch and a few other chairs, oversized stuffed chairs. And uh, please uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, Master Crestwall, Master Crestwall will be with you momentarily. Was the uh, was the little bobble? Was that you or was that him? That was me. Okay. Uh, no, he he has got uh, many ranks of etiquette, and I do not. Um, I shall not. Then I will not pounce on it. Then that's why I was asking. Uh, I didn't as know if it was like a delivery. Yeah, yeah. As you're looking around, uh, there there's a couple bookshelves and stuff with books in them. There's some other various pieces of uh, art and carvings. Uh, and you notice uh, there's a lot of um, a couple paintings and carvings of various hawks and falcons of uh, different types. Uh, a few moments later, the lad returns with a, a silver tray full of uh, wine and glasses and goblets. Uh, and some uh, snacks, some fresh rolls and fruit and cheese. And uh, in walks uh, Mastro Kestrel. Ah, greetings. Uh, now looks at the group. And with that, the young lad kind of does a little half bow and turns and walks off. Leaving the tray behind. Yeah. Nice to see you. Uh, I don't know if I should have expected you earlier or later, but uh, here we are. So here we are. And with that, he immediately walks over and pours himself a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I will drink with him. If he'll let me. Certainly. Uh, with that, oh. uh, if you look like you, uh, he, he, he will offer real poor drinks for anyone who wants one. Uh, you do see that the, the, there's a couple different pitchers. There's a, like I said, there's a pitcher of wine. There also seems to be a pitcher of water for those who don't drink um, alcohol. So, um, yeah. Welcome to my home. Uh, I guess the formal introductions are in order. Uh, I am uh, Edwin Crestwall at your service. And kind of does a little half, kind of a little tip bow kind of thing. Nice to meet you. My name's Drake. So these you. are my quiet friends. <laughs> I, I believe you uh, already know our names, but. Uh... I am Isla Vasco. Yeah, I'm sorry I, I missed. Uh, friend, but... I'm sorry I missed our introductions last time. I was naked in the sewers, running from rats. You know how that is. <laughs> that was not the oddest thing I've ever uh, heard or even spoken in my house. So. <laughs> Excellent. So, what were you doing up there on that rooftop that night? And who were you sword fighting? Um, I have been tracking a notorious occultist. Um, he calls himself the Forger. <laughs> that is a fun coincidence, isn't it, guys? More lucky than fun. <clears throat> we also happen to be on the trail of somebody known as the Forager. And the Dark Mistress. I don't know if you've heard of the Dark Mistress. Oh. Yeah, I believe that that's one of many titles they've given her. Do you know who she is? Um, so, uh, this might take a bit. <laughs> and so with that, he goes, he goes to sit down. Um, I'm grabbing a finger sandwich and sitting next to him. <laughs> Tea's all well. 
walk over and grab the decanter of wine and re refill yep. your own glass and his. Yep. Uh, so, I uh, stumbled on the existence, well, possible existence, well, at the time I thought it was a possible existence, of uh, an occultist. And I thought it was just an, a, a rare occultist that uh, had shown up. And it turns out that uh, it was much more of a well-orchestrated and coordinated um, network of uh, like-minded individuals um, that have been operating uh, to the north of Aldous. And uh, I, I encountered them uh, during my travels uh, as a traveling noble and uh, lent, eventually led me to trying to get promoted to becoming a member of the the, the Noble Council uh, here in Aldous. They referred to themselves as the Eternal Vigil. Sounds like some sort of losers, if you ask me. Oh, I would agree. Um, but they seem to be very well connected and well funded, which is what uh, distresses me. They believe they have found a, a vessel. Uh, that's their term. Uh, no, uh, they call the air. Um, the air is well. If there's to be if they are to be believed uh, of the reincarnation of Dolce. Okay, well, do you know who that is? I'm going to send that over to <laughs> I sure do, I say, even if I might not. Um... Uh, you all would actually recognize that name. That name is uh, Dol Dol Dolce is the, the name. It's, it was Empress Dolce. Uh, of the Empire of Thorns. Uh, according to the histories, uh, upon her death, she was uh, entombed in a, a sarcophagus and bound by uh, arcane rites, and her body was hidden far, far away so that uh, no one can try to <laughs> unearth her or in, or her cults couldn't surround her, and her burial place was kept a secret and according to the legend she's supposedly been removed you know because of her connection in her life uh, extended life the arcane uh, occult means she should have been removed from the great wheel at least according to you know religious teachings hmm Kale, it would be nice if you wanted to get some religious teaching uh, <laughs> I might not know a lot but I, I've come through a few times when we've needed <laughs> religious so she's supposed to be dead and she's back is that the gist of the story Kestrel uh, the, or she's trying so, to come back they believe they found her reincarnated form oh that's part of the great wheel we all you know, our souls are reborn uh, time and time again uh, they believe they found a fragment of the soul reborn in this, in this air, as they call it, uh, as they call this person. Uh, they seem to be trying to find uh, her various uh, tomes and arcane artifacts and, and regalia to return her powers to her. That sounds bad. Yes, uh, and I've given how connected they seem to be as far as money and resources, and given my past and uh, tanglings with them, uh, I was afraid that they had allies high amongst the influential in all this. Hmm. Hence, me wanting to keep a low profile while still investigating. 
Yeah, everything about your outfit screams low profile to me. Well, if you're looking for a, uh, uh, a flamboyant bird of night, they're not looking for me. Yeah, yeah I always just take my clothes off and pretend I'm a regular raccoon. And that still didn't work out. Hey, hey! <laughs> The cool oh. vigilante doesn't need to know that, do I? Well, maybe not, but... I think you're just looking for excuses to get naked while everybody else tries to save you. The, um... I don't know if raccoons can blush, but Drake will blush. He's trying to make a good impression with Kestrel. The one ally I did speak of this to... Uh, well, him and his wife has suffered a tragic carriage accident on the returning from the city of Garnet and died. So. Did they tell somebody or did, who found out? Uh, I don't know how and who would have found out, but I believe that they uh, they were targeted because uh, Marcel and Tress were asking too many questions. So I've been rather reluctant to speak out about this to anyone else. This is why I uh, attempted to investigate on my own. Well, we are after the same thing, so I think we could pull our resources and work together to take out these vigils, this vigil group. Also, Andy's gone, so our faces are wrong, but he'll be back, and then they'll be oh, right. Oh, no. <laughs> Has anybody mentioned the, the other problem with the cat? That's eh, criminal stuff. We can we can handle that. It's the cultist stuff I'm really worried about. I mean, they might be looped together. These are only access to high society. I mean, it's probably not a terrible idea to bring up to Castro the involvement of Mr. Smiler. I'm down if you guys are. I feel like I'm talking a lot, and I don't know if I'm over-talking for him. Yeah. You're saying all the right things so far. Do we, do we get a sense of, like, how healed he is from the other? Like, is he still... Do he have, like, visible bandages and things? <clears throat> he, does, or... he, does, he does not have visible bandages or anything, but he is... Uh being rather specific on the movements he makes and he's not overexerting himself. It's quite easy for you to pick up on that like, he's hurt based on the fact that you know he's hurt. Um, someone else, he might be able to pull it off as if, uh, you know, he overextended him, uh, himself in polo or something. Because now polo is a thing that they play in, in all this. I just said that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet sea folk yeah, have awesome water polo too. I was gonna say, but polo in all this is a totally different thing because you know the rye horses actually get involved in the game. Well, that's the thing. The half of them are on foot, and then the half of them are horses. Horse versus man, as God intended. Oh, that's a terrible thing. Um. This question came up last night, too. Would you rather horse. fight a duck-sized horse or a horse-sized duck? <laughs> duck-sized horse? Obviously. Sorry, it was a hundred duck-sized horses instead of one duck-sized oh, horse. Oh, well, that's, that's a different question. Um, <laughs> it's still the large duck. Uh, anyway, um... Yeah, I think we can clue him in on Mr. Smyra and 
I think he could be a big help to us, personally. Yeah, concur. I just don't think we need to tell him everything. We probably shouldn't tell him we're on a secret assignment. No. Especially, uh, Quinlan's probably a noble like he is, right? Do they uh, work in the same circles? Uh, they, they... Quinlan is not a noble, but they do operate in similar circles. Uh, Quinlan is just a, uh, from a rather, rather wealth, wealthy family. Mm -hmm. Um, and Quinlan has, uh, connections, but Quinlan is actually an explorer by trade. Mm. So Quinlan has all the benefits of a noble without taking the Blue Rose test. Pretty much, yeah. Mm. Sketchy. He's, he's an <laughs> entrepreneur. Well, his, his family has had money for generations. And members of mm. his family line have been nobles, but not he's not currently a noble. He's too busy, you know, um, exploring the far regions of the Shadow Barrens and West and other areas. That's scary. I want to talk to Green Ronin and let them know that once you reach a certain level of wealth, you should be required to take the Blue Rose test. There's no Jeffrey Bezos in Aldia. <laughs> Jeffrey Bezos. Uh, it looks like we might have lost uh, Andy for the remainder of the stream. Oh no. So this having this this connection is not stable, it keeps dropping out, so unlucky. So. Okay, so we're telling him about Mistress Myra. Yes. Um so, so, so the other thing that is related but perhaps not directly related to all of these is the, uh, the, the, the criminal element that has been involved seem to be working with with a uh, noble, well, maybe noble, a, 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 a connected Raikat who goes by the name of uh, Mr. Smyra. I've heard the name in passing. I have not um, actually met that right cat. But um, I know that there was a, a group uh, of um, bandits that had stolen several of the uh, items or uh, stolen something of, of important to the cult. The cult was after them and they um clash the number of occasions so uh. so what are your th what is your thoughts about this right cat i don't know we know she's attached to the night pad and night pads in some capacity but beyond that we don't know what she's up to do you want to arrange for a meeting discussion or um i think we well, would give away more information than we would gain if we met her uh, or a uh, a clandestine meeting or would you like me to to, to follow up on that i i I think we need to know if her interest was purely criminal looking for, oh, hey, these are hot and there is money to be made, or if she had some idea about what was taken and what it meant. Because if it is the latter, then that is much more of a issue. If it was purely happenstance of, oh, look, these are valuable, then, well, fine. She was, she was a criminal who happened to get lucky, um, and we can deal with that some other time. But I, 
I don't know what the best way to inquire about that would be. Well, if you like, I can speak with her. I'm going to say this as politely as I can, so please don't take offense. Um, knowing that my charisma is not very high. Uh, um, I, I worry sometimes about the methods with which you've been acting. Um, is this a strictly diplomatic call that you would plan on making? Or would you go as a bird? I could... Uh go about the see the direction uh though if i go as myself there's more likely a chance it will draw the cult's attention well sure but it seems that you've already drawn the cult's attention as a bird and see you on a rooftop and me saving your life Yes, but uh, they wouldn't be able to strike at me politically if they... Uh... Oh, oh, I see. There's more finesse to this than maybe I initially realized. I can do either, um, but if I go as uh, uh, as a member of the uh, Noble Assembly, there's much more likely... Uh, they will be harder to root out because they realize the crown is onto them. I, I trust your judgment. I'm sure you'll get whatever information you can get us the best way you can go. I will begrudgingly pull out the mask that I still had. <laughs> I really wanted to pose as a girl for a while, but I don't think that that's right. So I will hand it back. Point of inspiration for Kale. Oh, I'm grumpy about it, but I'll take it. <laughs> and no longer are we blackmailing people. This is a mutual relationship. <laughs> so, uh, awesome. Uh, so, was there anything else that you wanted to, add to talk to? Uh, Kestrel slash uh, crest wall about. Um, inside of his mask, I just put a little bundle of herbs too that are like lavender and peppermint and lemon grass and all of those things that might be helpful to uh, to help some of the aches and pains that he might still be experiencing. Awesome. So is that all we uh, need for Mr. Mr. Kestrel? Yeah. He said he'll think it over. He's going to think it over for a couple of days, and then I'll send you a message uh, with how and when he uh, reaches out to uh, the Rye Cat. I guess we'll leave and then see what we want to do about the spire. Does anybody awesome. have anything else before we tap out? I don't think I have anything else I want to talk to Kestrel about. Okay. And was there anyone else that you wanted to speak to? Um, I know there was a debate about whether or not you wanted to follow up on uh, uh, either the uh, the more occult, um, arcane contacts that might be able to give you answers. Yeah, definitely debate. Um, I 
Because, I mean, we got the bulk of information from Kestrel. We just need to figure out who this person is and kind of take it from there. Is there a board we can go check that says, if you've been reincarnated, please come here? <laughs> there's, there's not. No. There's not I'm an curious. organization that settles your affairs from life to life? <laughs> no, no. I'm curious most, if most this people... is a willing person. Yeah, most people don't um, really, you know, uh, recall, you know, there's, there's some people who occasionally have flashes of, of previous lives, but as a general rule, yeah, most people... One is what you remember. It's also, funny how it's only the evil people who ever remember their past life. Hey, the burning passion comes through when you're just dedicated to your work. I like maybe, more, maybe it's the taint of shadow on your soul. Like I was gonna say, I think it's more that uh, if you uh, if you're actually going through the the wheel the, the way you're supposed to be. You, you you don't have to hold on to those things. <laughs> I don't think Drake has come to that Zen part of his life yet. <laughs> There'll be plenty of more for him to do once he dies. This is no place you know, to die. Kind of while we're in this lull, Drake, I guess maybe I can ask you. Um, just with some of your background, maybe you know, I do worry a little bit about us kind of disbanding um, the night pads and what that means for the balance of power with a group like the Sirens. Um, do you think that there will be some kind of power struggle or additional crime happening here as a result of us eliminating some competition? It's possible. Um, I can put some feelers out and see if there's any uh, see if there's any criminals I know of who uh, who would be interested in taking advantage of something like this. I've worked with some people in the past. <laughs> and Jonesy, just so that I remember right, the sirens were the group that were the that were being transformed. Uh, the silence. silence. Oh, silence. Sorry. Adjust my notes accordingly there. Um. Uh, yeah, the silence is uh, totally not the uh, the mob. I mean, uh, but th that was the group that was kind of being transformed into goblins or a, a, a couple. Similar. A couple of the, the low level henchmen got attacked and transformed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I worry about that kind of transformative magic and what it might be able to do unchecked by another group. I mean, if the silence is the quote unquote fantasy mob, I think there isn't much we can do until we get much farther ahead ourselves. I mean, these power scuffles are always going to happen with these low level groups. Yeah, and I don't think the silence is going to be filling the vacuum left behind by the night pads. I think the night pads are beneath their level of organization, just speaking from personal experience. And Bob said he, they were already in decline when we talked to them. There might be some other smaller gangs in the silence that could be taking advantage of the chaos, though. And they might be attracting the attention of these cultists now that we've sort of outed the night pads, and the night pads have sort of shown their ass here. A statue? <laughs> hey, the silence is a statue, isn't it? <laughs> Jonesy, how do I put my feelers out? What do you want me to roll for that? Um, we will handle that as part of your background, and I will I will just leave it at that, and then uh, yeah, you just basically you know drop some notes, left some B scans, and. Uh, and, and let time take its course. And, yeah. Do we want to research on how ink 
reincarnation works and try to pinpoint who might be reincarnated or what those patterns might be. And if we're running around collecting these, was it vessels or um, pieces that might help bring them back? We need to be careful who we give them to and where we store them. It may be worth investigating it, but I feel from what we've been told that the air already exists. I don't think it is one of several potential people. Hmm. Yeah, the other the other outstanding questions you had were about uh, the ref references to um, the terror and um, And anything else that might be um, specifically uh, a cult lore or, or arcane lore that you might want to ask anyone about, but, uh, including like reincarnation, things like that. So. I'm not too sure. But after that, our only point of interest is the spire, right? Um, yeah, that's the other thing that was on your list. Unless there's something else that you want to investigate in a different direction you want to go in. but. Um, the clues That's have been leading, trial. Yeah, the clues have been leading towards the spire. We should probably get notes to excuse us from classes since it's a few days away. Right. <laughs> this spire has big final boss energy. I'm nervous about it. Nah, don't worry about it. I feel like if we get to the gate at the edge of town, Junji's going to ask, make sure you save before you go past this point. <laughs> oh. Don't be silly, Drake. <laughs> we die, we die. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> if you die, you die. There ain't more, much point being scared about it. So do we want to research the spire um, up at the library and then try to figure out an excuse? Or we could go on a weekend. I wonder if that works with the cultist's timetable. All the side quests, all the time. I mean, I guess we could also wait for the forager. That's true. He's he going to be here two days. Yeah, that Fair sounds enough. dangerous, but it does sound like a good lead. But what if we set, like, an ambush for him? Like, what if we told people who are much stronger than us to deal with it? <laughs> hmm. I mean... He, he did make someone's brain stop working from, from afar. A, from that a was one time. Yes. Ooh. Did somebody's brain stop working from afar? What would be the chances they could do it twice? Pretty high. And within one day? I think one of us could make it. I think you're probably right. He probably will not kill all of us with his mind, but... <laughs> he might use some of his other foraging tools. I, I, I'm very worried now because I said the name of that person, and that seems to be the trigger word for someone to go. But, well, you're not... I, I'm putting my hands I, over my ears. I think you're probably <laughs> not connected to him in the right way, but... I hope not. I also think if he or she or they, we don't know the, the gender of the forager, if the forager were... If they were monitoring well enough to know to kill the man we were talking to, wouldn't they know not to come to the tunnels to tomorrow to look for them? That's a very good point. Well, by that logic, then they know that we have the book. 
And so they'll be searching for us. Probably, yes. So we that should... makes me even less easy. So we should hide in the book. I don't think there's anywhere safer than within the archives. Hmm. I feel like the archives is the same place, but it's a place they would suspect and know about. We could pretend that we were delivering the book to the forager. Like, get an old Aldous cookbook and cut the binding out and cut the binding of the journal out and swap the covers. I'm going to ask a very silly question, but why don't we just destroy the book? Um, we already have what we need out of it. Are you sure? I took very detailed notes. I understand this, but I feel like there's probably... There's probably somebody who still needs to look at it. I'm not a wizard, but aren't magic items hard to destroy? The journal's not a magic item. Oh, it's just the journal? Right, yes. The, the, the spell book is a little more magic, but it's still still just a spell book. Um, you can destroy a spell book. I'd prefer not to, but uh, it's certainly doable. And we've already left that guy's house, right? I just feel that it's out that's of game. Cool. I feel very yeah. weird about saying yes. let's burn books, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already done that on a different stream. <laughs> I don't want to be accused of anything. Don't I don't say it like that. that. <laughs> Will hates literature. You heard it here first, everybody. It's not true. I love reading. <laughs> I love books. He doesn't hate literature. He just hates fringe religions. That's why we're burning this cult book. And okay, so maybe we don't burn <laughs> it. Maybe we... I, I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to keep it if it's going to bring something that can melt your brain. Well, I don't think we'll be keeping it. I think we'll be giving it to the archive, and, like, people who get paid more than us will decide what to do with it. Well, we should probably do that sooner rather than later, then, I guess. Is my point. Yeah. I still feel better having it within our control than out of sight. I would rather the person coming for it come for us. Sure. Would, would you like to take it? If you'd like. I, and I would. <laughs> I will hand <laughs> <laughs> these throughout the book. I want nothing to do with this anymore. Teaser awesome. will, will take the book. Teaser's um, a big damn hero. I would like to nominate Teaser for a point of inspiration. No, no, no. Um, I would like to update Teaser's life insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> Beneficiary, Ula. Ula. Hey, I'm paying the policy every month. Damn right, I'm the beneficiary. <laughs> so, um, so what is the 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 envoy's next uh, next move going to be? Uh, you can uh, wait a couple days. You can uh, and see about uh, if the forager is going to show up to find out what happened at the the little watch lair of the, the cult, or you can head south or um, go look for other allies uh, that you can speak to about occult-ish things or any. You know, I'm team do research on this fire and then head out. That's where I am inclined. Yeah, I am in the same boat as that. Okay. Doing research so, on this fire and preparing for the journey by, I don't know, renting horses in a wagon. So, um... As the library. library. Uh, research on this fire. Um... You gotta go try to do that and the, the Royal Archives and Library? Or are you gonna follow up on the, uh, the, uh, the occultist that, uh, Nichols gave you? Uh, we should start with the occultist, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should probably start with the occultist. 
That's like so that sounds like somebody we're gonna have to fight. Yeah. I suppose Excuse in me, general, sir? in in Blue Rose, a cult in general is evil magic. Am I right when I say that? Yes. Yes. And let me rephrase. Uh, the the it wasn't an occultist per se. It's it's someone who has knowledge of occult activities and occult. Awesome. Activities. Okay, that makes not, me feel better. Not an occultist with a capital O. This person is a yes. It's more of a this oh. person grew up. This person grew up in Kern and knows a lot about the occult. And this is an occultologist, not an occultist. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, it's it's like the difference between a demonologist and a devil worshiper. Um, <laughs> I'm failing common, but I'm pretty sure that's not the word. It's the word now. I'm putting it in my next book. <laughs> How words be birth? No. Uh, so, uh, so are you gonna go speak to the occultologist? Is that the word we went with? That's yes. the word I went with. <laughs> okay. Patent can pen, I uh, bring? Can I bring my flying cat with me? You sure can. Awesome. Your your your, your fel, uh, fel cat is very excited to go on this little trip with you. Uh, it's been a while since they got to spread their wings, and yes. So. Uh, with that, uh, the group of you decide to go uh, and meet with um, uh, Lady, uh, Lady uh, Lindra Vess. Uh, and uh, she has a small homestead and shop on the edge of the outer ward. The outer ward of the city is the farthest edge of, of, of the city of Elvis. Uh, once you get out to the outer ward, the, the roads are a lot wider. Uh, not that they're narrow anywhere in the city itself, but there's more spacious. You're well beyond the old remains of the old wall. There are a lot of markets, a lot of small homesteads. It's a lot of where the um, the fresh fruit and vegetables are grown and a lot of the markets for produce uh, and for the farther farmlands a lot of that that initial market trade is held out in the outer mark uh, the outer ward we're heading out and, to the sur suburbs yeah pretty much you're, you're heading out to the, the you know the edge of town yeah uh, and as you you go there uh, you do have an address for her her homestead slash shop uh, she has a modest home, uh, and so most of the buildings out here are kind of one-story jobs, and uh, it looks like it's two small buildings kind of adjoining uh, each other, one which has kind of been repurposed into a small shop, and the other which is a, um, you know, it looks like a small little homestead. Um, and um, as you approach, you see uh, a little sign in the window that says, oh, Lady Lindra uh, uh, Voss's Apothecary. Oh. So, uh, as you enter the shop, the little bell swings open. It's got a small wooden door, and inside the door, uh, part of it's been cut out and replaced with leaden glass, uh, colored leaden glass. It's got like a this red and, and kind of gold uh, diamond pattern. Uh, it's been really, it's a nice little quaint shop. Inside there are, uh, it's small, but there are several uh, shelves and a small table that is basically crammed full of stuff. There are uh, small ointments and jars and um, other things like that kind of just clustered around uh, the entire sh uh, small shop. There's a small counter and there's also a small uh, to the side, a small table with uh, five chairs sitting around it. Awesome. Okay. Is there a bell? Yeah, when counter? you walk in, with, uh, when you walk in, a small little bell chimes from the door. Uh, uh, you do see the counter. Uh, behind the counter seems to be a small little uh, storage space, and it looks like there's a doorway past there that leads into the other side of the other building. Uh, and after a couple seconds, a uh, small curtain and the doorway kind of pushes aside, and out steps a uh, 
rather striking woman. Uh, she's a little, little less than six feet tall. Uh, she's uh, wearing very nice, uh, uh, com common clothes. Uh, they're very main well maintained, and there's some embroidery edges and stuff that she's added to the clothing over over time. Uh, but they're rather functional looking. Uh, she has her, her long hair kind of loosely pulled back on one side, and uh, it does drape over one side of her face. It's uh, her long black hair kind of drapes over her, her right side of her face. Uh, uh, welcome. How may I be of assistance? She says, and you kind of pick, pick up a, a slight Kurdish accent when she speaks. Those, especially for those uh, from current. Thanks. Hello, Miss. Um, we would like to talk to you about your line of expertise. Oh, okay. I do have several salves and potions and, uh, and ointments that uh, are available. Uh, what can I assist you with? It's perhaps a little uh, more serious than that. Um, yeah, we're doing a school project for our finals. Uh, Tizra, as you say that, you skip a faint whiff of um, damp earth and a slight hint of decay. A little bit of spice in there. Is it pumpkin spice? Yeah. Um, and as you speak, Tizra, you kind of see her body language kind of stiffens a little bit. I promise we're not up to anything bad. But I think my friend Teaser should definitely explain further. Uh, we... Um, we are doing... some... Uh, in investigating... Uh, older mysteries. Um, Some of which are, well, uh, perhaps uh, less than holy in the light. Uh, we were referred to you by um, blanking on names. Presto? Uh, uh, Professor Hirsch. Yes, uh, by uh, Professor Hirsch. Um, we are so that's not a, a deep kind of breath. Can you say that? You don't seem entirely pleased to hear the name. Uh it's uh It's been a while since I've seen someone from the homeland. Uh, well, yes. Um, I have to say that I was never able to see much of our home. Uh, my parents kept me hid away. I didn't miss much. Please, uh, please, um, boys, have a seat. Uh, and she says that and she walks across the, the small shop, like the, the, the seven steps it takes to get across the shop, uh, and uh, flips the little sign to closed. Um, and then sit, uh, we'll, we'll join you at, at the small table that she's got uh, to the side of the shop. Uh, 
And as she as she goes to sit down, you notice that the hair on her left side kind of brushes her back a little bit, and you see that there's a an, uh, pretty extensive scarring over the left side of her face. Sorry, uh, sorry, the the right side of her face where the hair was grouped over. Gotcha. <sighs> All right, so we're hoping that she knows about the, the I mean, about the spire, right? Um, So in our in the research that we've been doing with the the, the professor, um, I'm just gonna go for broke. Um, I will pull out the journal. Um, we have come across this book, and we are hoping to find more. In, or to understand more about um, uh, 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 about the uh, the lady and the spire and the professor knew about the history, but not necessarily what forces might be coming. <laughs> we uh, she definitely want to know about any dangers that might be related to mounting an expedition there. When you pull the book out, she kind of pushes back in her chair. She doesn't push the chair back, but definitely pushes back into her chair. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as you're kind of explaining, she starts reacting ever so slightly, but you can tell she's definitely still on her guard. So, um, so you have the book out. Are you going to actually flip the book open to anything in specific, or are you just... Um, I mean, do we want to just go straight with like what it showed that, you know, gave us the clue about where the spire could be located? Might as well. Well, I was going to say this book is clearly making you uncomfortable. Perhaps we put it away and reference the notes that I've made. Would you be more comfortable touching those, Miss um, Lady? Um, the rest. Um, I, I, will, I will do what I can to help. The envoys have, have assisted me multiple times and have you know, given and helped give me a home uh, uh, and came this this land. So. Okay. And you break out the notes, um, and you start kind of going and showing her the, the notes. And, this, and um, so, here's what she's able to share with the group. Uh, the the references to the terror or an allusion, uh, a reference to um, a slightly heretical belief amongst some occultists that. that you can physically enter the realm of shadow that there there's a a a um inflection of the world as we know it that lies between here and the realm of shadow um and there's a um kind of like there's a reflection between the world as we know it here and the great wheel um some call that the fey wild and some call the other, the shadow fell. And through various rituals uh, and um, 
it's believed that you can enter into a place uh, and walk into the land of Sh the Shadowfell. And this other reference that he has here, uh, uh, Gradster, uh, that is that is the name of a powerful shadow fiend. According to legend, that shadow fiend served Lady Dolce. I know that there is a, a, um, a few short years ago, uh, the great Lich King of Aldous, uh, sorry, the great Lich King of Kern was slayed by the High Queen of Aldous. Uh, she has, during an assault against the nation of Kern, and she dispatched the last of the Shadow Lords that still, um, the last of the Shadow Lords that dated back to the Empire of Thorns. Um, there was a hereditary cult in Kern that believed that Delche could be reborn and she would be uh, the, the Dark Consort is one name they gave her. She would be uh, the Lich King's dark, dark Consort and the two would rule over all of Aldea as um, High King and Queen of Unlife. She's had other names, uh, the Dark Mother, the Dark Vessel, the, this would-be heir. Um, if this cult is trying to get into the Shadowfell, they could believe that a fragment of her soul could be residing within the Shadowfell. As a layperson, that sounds real bad, okay? <laughs> Um, how can we stop that from happening? Well, based on what you're seeing here and what you're showing me and the sketches in the, and that you've shown me, my, my theory is that the tower is still there. It's just not on our side of the fell. Oh, no. Seeing how the ley lines converge in that area and through certain rituals, um, and dark magics, the tower might exist in one land or the other or move back and forth between the two. You say that there's no ruins there, which means the tower didn't fall, per se. It may have been moved. Especially if they were trying to reach across the Shadowfell to, to find someone or pull someone or call someone back. As an experienced ecotologist, do you know if there's any important planetary events coming up, or magical dates, or anything that would be a convergence of power that they could use to move things back and forth? Well, yeah. nothing... Or do you I think, think they're going to do it the old-fashioned way and just, like, murder a bunch of people and use their blood? Uh, possibly. Um, or uh, they could be doing some sort of rituals to try to bend the ley lines uh, to make some sort of um, nexus event occur. Well... have to stop this when you say bend the ley lines do you mean like physically move their locations or do you mean like I, I understand that one world is kind of on top of the other like shadows do but can these can these points move location as well should we be looking for a place other than where these ley lines intersect well my, my suspicion is that they might be trying to convert other ley lines there um, oh, that makes much more sense. And ley lines 
theoretically can be bent by powerful artifacts or rituals or um, occasionally they move naturally just as the course of rivers yeah. change over time. Um, so they can be diverted just like a normal river, like a, a river in the world that we understand it, a physical realm. When you say artifacts, would one of the, I'll gesture to the book, does, does this constitute as one of those, something strong enough to move a ley line? I would suspect not. I mean, I, oh. I, I've lost most of my connection to uh, arcane energies, but I would suspect no. Real quick, um, Tizra, what is your intelligence? My intelligence? Mm -hmm. uh, 14. And when she says that, um, you kind of get the sense that she may have once been a warlock but has broken her pack. Gotcha. Um, and at that, that moment, you get that sense. Um, you also smell what appears to be earth, uh, uh, damp earth and mushrooms. And other scents that you might associate with fall or autumn, perhaps. Hmm. But and this this sounds well, this is troubling, very troubling. Um, I mean, if they're trying to converge the ley lines, and, I mean. And, and reach across the shadow fell you know, to pull something over or push something there that is is something of great importance um, and something of that that uh, must be stopped Do you think this is something we could stop, or do you think we should call some more powerful people in on this? Um, my concern is if they're doing that, what else are they up to? Um, do you, can... you potentially have anything here that could help us? This isn't necessarily my realm of expertise, but... It seems to be yours. Maybe you have something that could help stop this? Giant well, flaming sword. <laughs> we'll take one um, potion of level up, please. <laughs> Copy of heresy for dummies. <laughs> um, I, I can uh, definitely... They would, it, 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 for a ritual of this magnitude, they would need some sort of focus, some sort of um, anchor stone or something. Uh, if that is that sever connection is severed, then it would diverge the the ley lines and then stop this. I think I'm guessing uh, something that powerful would have to be something that rival the touchstone and all this or uh, or. Uh, a, a large piece of uh, corrupted Shah's crystal, or there's be something of, of, of power, something significant of power. If that could be damaged or broken or stopped, then or the connection to it stopped, then it should stop whatever they're attempting to do. I, I have a few a few things I can give you to aid you in the in this. Uh, I can also make sure I. Uh, reach out to others and see if, what else, what other assistance that they might be able to lend. Um. Speaking as less of a lay person, do you think something like this would have to be smuggled in from out of, out of the city or out of country? Maybe from Kern? Possibly. 
possibly. Um, or dug up recently. Yeah. Found. Reclaimed. Never any innocent paleontologists in all this. <laughs> well, do we have any more questions for uh, our esteemed friend here? Has she seemed to react at all to my cat? Uh, she gave him some scratches. Okay. But she doesn't seem like afraid of him or... No. Okay. No. Fell cats are actually not not common, but not uncommon, especially gotcha. in the city. Uh, and they're adorable, so. Sure. I guess I just didn't know. You said that it was a black cat with wings, so I got nervous. I'm, oh. I now will am paranoid that I have a demonic cat in my possession that I found in a... Uh... No. Well, no, no. No, no. You, have a, you have a cute little kitten that happens to have wings. Cool. And he's black because I like black cats. I'm here for it. Um, but as she, as she's fishing, as the conversation seems to start to be winding down, she does stand up and grabs a satchel uh, and starts going around her shop and throwing a few things in it. Um, which she will hand the pack uh, to to the group. Well, here you go, teaser. So. So, with that, uh, was there any other last-minute questions you had for the good lady? Not that I can think of at this moment. Yeah, I don't think I have any questions more than fears. <laughs> so with that, uh, the, the group proceeds to uh, uh, me uh, gather their belongings, uh, grab the, the satchel that was just, uh, given, gifted to them as they walk out the door preparing for what comes next. And with that, we will call it a night. And that ends the episode, uh, tonight's episode of Tales of the Finest. Co-titled, I'm in danger. We're all in danger. <laughs> We're all in danger, yeah. So. So, with that, uh, I would like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, if you're catching this uh, on demand, uh, uh, please you know, feel free to, uh, to send us a message on Discord or, or uh, on our website and let us know what you think. I'm sure you're about to with that. Catching us on uh, YouTube, on our uh, YouTube channel, by all means, please leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, especially, uh, you know, yeah, leave us a, a, a comment, especially with what you like or didn't like, or, or you know, always want to know um, how we can improve the stream. So, um, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone of uh, my, my cast for tuning in. So it was a very much a talk to the NPCs night so uh, I, I appreciate their patience with that um, at least the NPCs yeah. are cool that's always fun oh yeah I, I dig it yeah I love talking so, to the NPCs so uh, other than that we will be back uh, tomorrow night is that correct with a brand new episode of, um, that's correct um, Oscar of the week uh, where our illustrious uh, tale awesome in the world uh, is no rating that's that uh, amazing show and then uh, later this week we have a new episode of our podcast coming out where uh, Aaron as our, our uh, in narrating uh, GMing for his group of uh, uh, players and then next Monday we return to an all new episode of Another War an ongoing Moons and Masterminds game where we find out how the Master Mage of Earth is not dead like he's supposed to be um, at least Maybe not dead, or sort of kind of alive. I, I I'm, I, I, the necromancer is confused of how he's not dead. Um, so, uh, yeah. And uh, my good friend Steve Kenson will be on as the uh, as our guest star, playing that master mage, uh, the creator of mutants and masterminds, and the nicest vampire in gaming. 
ask him about the portrait of Dorian Gray. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, so anyway, uh, with that, I'd like to thank everyone, and uh, with that, uh, yeah, we will see you next time on Tales of the Finest. Are we going to rate anyone this evening? Oh, let me see who's out there. Ooh, Saving Throw Show is playing tonight. They're playing Dune. We should go raid Dune. Dune is cool. Dune. Dune is cool. Hey, everybody make good choices. We'll see you next time. Bye.